Is there ever a situation where charging less than $500 to DJ a wedding is okay? Well, today we're gonna find out, people. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. So today we're gonna talk price. We're gonna talk numbers. So I'm a big fan of market research. That's one thing I can thank college for, you know, never use the degree. But you know, I definitely learned a lot about researching and how important it is and putting in like the time and effort and work and to understand your competitors in any space. Like even with this YouTube page, I have a secret spreadsheet I guess it's not secret anymore, but like I literally keep track of every other DJ YouTube's numbers, like what's working for them, what videos aren't working, you know, how their numbers are, if they're growing, how fast are they growing, like what they're doing, what I think is happening, like what is contributing to their growth, what is contributing to their decline, all that stuff. Like I analyze every other DJ YouTube and I keep track of it like a psycho behind the scenes. But it's something that I think is super, super important because think about it, if I can understand all my competitors in the world of YouTube, like what's working for them, what's not working for them, then I can apply that to myself and figure out what videos to make. Like I'm always analyzing, looking for like what's missing on YouTube, which is a big reason why I made the ADJ link video. You know, I was interested in the controller. I thought it was really cool. And when I looked it up, there wasn't a single video on it ever. So I figured, wow, this is a pretty big opportunity. Anybody who's interested in it, I'm gonna be the only video in town. So I made that video and that was based on market research. You know what I mean? It's all about supply and demand people. If there's a a video that doesn't exist on YouTube, I'm gonna make it and I got the supply and if there's enough demand, you know, we get the plays, right? Same thing for price, supply and demand. What's the average DJ price in your market? If you don't know this, you need to figure it out very, very quickly. And the biggest advice I can give you is like, once you figure out what the average wedding DJ price is in your market, use it as a starting point. Don't use it as a crutch, you know? Figure out what you wanna charge based on your competitors, what you think would be fair so you can get rolling. And when you start booking a ton of events, you know, when you got a lot of weddings on the books, that's when the demand exceeds the supply, which therefore means you need to raise your prices and make a little more money because you're flying off the shelf. You know, with all that said, let's talk about the million dollar question here. Is $500 or less too cheap for a wedding, no matter where you're at? Like, is, is there ever a situation where charging less than $500 is okay? Well, I'm gonna say fuck no, but instead of me just saying that, let's do some market research. Let's have some fun. You see, I don't know if you guys are aware because like I just discovered this to be completely honest with you, but on Wedding Wire, you can organize a search based on wedding DJs that cost $500 or less. So let's do a little market research and bring up Wedding Wire and let's see what these DJ companies that charge less than $500 to DJ a wedding look like. So we're gonna do some market research. I'm gonna bring up my trusty iPad here. We're gonna go to WeddingWire.com. Shout out to WeddingWire for having this option. This should be fun. So this essentially is gonna be my first video ever giving unsolicited advice to these people, but uh, you know, I think it'll be fun and useful and valuable, hopefully. So we're gonna start here. Basically, we're at the main website. We wanna search DJs. So we'll go to DJs. We'll just do a find. Now, I wanna pick on the whole website, not just New Jersey. So we're gonna delete Southern New Jersey, delete New Jersey, because you know that's where I'm at or whatever. And then um, I wanna do under $500. Bam. Look how many we got. We got, wow. It's like over nine pages, it's insane. We'll start out with 100, okay. VCI Audio Entertainment, $100. That's the most pop, that's not the starting price, that's the most popular price. Oh my God. I mean, it, it like, it doesn't look that bad. Like the pictures aren't terrible. You ever see a car commercial online, like $199 a month to lease this car or whatever, and then you go to the dealership and they're like, oh yeah, that 199 price, that's if you put like 100 grand down, the actual price to lease this car is like 699, you know, and they like bait and switch you or whatever it's called. This has gotta be what this is. Like there's no way this guy charges $100. Like why would you charge this much, man? Like if you're watching this, raise your prices. Like the $100 price must be like just for him to like attend your wedding. <laughs> Like, I'll come to your wedding and like, you know, I'm a great time for a hundred bucks, but if you want me to bring my equipment and actually DJ it, it's really gonna be closer to a thousand. Like, that's what I'm assuming. There's no way, I, there's just no way. I mean, his, well, his reviews aren't great. So that's that's not good. Oh shit. Regardless, you should be charging more than a hundred dollars. I don't give a shit. Prime time of Nebraska. The setup's not my favorite, but like it's, you know, it's a setup. A hundred dollars? That's not like cheap, like that's good. That better be the starting price for your like party boss on a Tuesday. Like not like for your DJ service. This is crazy. Like t tell me in the comments, like am I wrong? Like should they be raising their prices? I mean, I feel like a hundred dollars is a, 
a little cheap. If you DJs are using a cheap price to get people to like call you to get more leads in or whatever you call them, you know, more clients to like contact you and ask, you know, further questions, using a cheaper price is only gonna get you the clients that don't value what you do, that don't value a DJ service, don't value like, you know, the importance of having a good DJ, having a good MC at a wedding. Like that's the only clients you're gonna get. Cause trust me, any clients that care about that, that are all about the music, that wanna have like the best DJ at their wedding, they're not going to contact you at all unless you were least the average price of a DJ in your market. Because that low price is gonna turn them off. They're gonna be like, wow, he's only charging 100 bucks? He probably sucks. And I don't care, I, even in Nebraska, there's no shot that the average price of a wedding DJ in Nebraska is $100. Like maybe it's 600, 800, 1,000. If anybody from Nebraska is watching this, let us know in the comments what the average price is in Nebraska. Let us know, but it's definitely not 100. There's no fucking way. All right, how about Detroit Family Entertainment here? Most popular price, $150. 18, see another DJ with 18 years of experience and you're charging, your most popular price is $150 and you claim to offer the highest quality DJ services in your town. So you're the highest quality, but you charge 150. Are you the most expensive? Like if you are the highest quality DJ service in your market, you should be the most expensive, no? Or at least like up there, at least top three as far as pricing, you know? I haven't seen one company yet that like is charging like the right price under 500, like not one. Central Arkansas, all right, 450. All right, this is, this is a high price. This is on the high end, right? Wedding entertainment company based in Benton, Arkansas. DJ popular known by stage name, Joey T. DJ Joey T, another 18 years of experience. Let's look at these pictures right here. I mean, seriously, look at this. I mean, that's like, he's got one of those uh, those plush booths. Like, that's not bad at all. That actually looks like a cool setup. He has his up lighting a little too bright. He's probably washing out the entire room and it's gonna be not great for pictures. He needs to adjust his brightness and all that. But regardless, and I wouldn't use hot pink ever, like use a, you know, not a primary color like that, you know, more like pastels because it's gonna be too harsh. But regardless, it's legit. Like you're, you're worth more than four to fifty dollars, man. What are you doing? This has got to be a joke. These these all got to be joke. All right, West Coast sounds for one fifty. This has got to be worth one fifty. This is also in Cal California. I feel like everything's expensive in California. You're a hundred fifty dollar DJ in California. Like your rent has to be four grand a month. Like <laughs> you, it's like the most expensive state ever besides my state, I guess. Oh, 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 top quality speakers. He's got top quality speakers. That's good. That's good. Now my man DJ Amac didn't mention experience at all. So he might just be starting out and he only has three reviews. So it looks like he's just starting out, but he's got three five-star reviews, which is very, very good. And you're in a market that I know for a fact, the average wedding DJ price is probably one of the highest in the country. So if your most popular price is 150, just, just start it a little higher, man. Just start it a little higher. All right, how about Shaky Legs Entertainment, huh? Wyoming. Holy shit, Green River, Wyoming. I didn't think DJs were even out there. My man, DJ Crazy Legs. What is the starting price for wedding DJ services? 350. What is the most popular price? 450. What is included in your most popular wedding package? Consultant, flat screen, MC, disco ball, PA systems, microphones. So you bring a TV? So do you, don't tell me you have a TV booth. Don't tell me you have a TV booth for 450. Don't, don't even tell me. Don't even, no, no you don't. There's American audio speaker. All right, you know, um, maybe he's like in the right realm of pricing here for Wyoming and for, you know, where, what he's doing. All right, maybe, all right, we found one. Okay, we'll keep it moving. But you know what? I'm gonna find a DJ company that has like the most reviews that, you know, is charging under 500. Like, the, okay, they have 30 reviews here. Columbus, Ohio, JT Michaels Entertainment, right? So they, they've been, you know, doing their thing. 30 reviews isn't easy to come by. You know, you gotta work for that shit. So, all right. All their pictures look a little dated, but they're all professionally taken, so not bad. All right. Provides professional entertainment to the entire state of Ohio and operation since 1988. Oh my God. And your average, most popular price, $4.95. Wow. You've been DJing since before I was born. I was born in 89. You were born, so you started DJing the year before I was born and you're still charging $4.95? Like I think $4.95 was cheap back then. First mobile DJ company to provide music to our clients in digital format. Wow, so he's the first one to switch to like laptop. So you're an OG, like you're claiming you were the first one to go digital. You're the first one to go digital. You're a pioneer in your market, but you're the cheapest one in your market or gotta be one of the cheapest. Why? All right, we're gonna wrap this up with one more here. I went to page four, right on the top of the list, all requests live. I think this one, may be interesting. Would you want to hire a DJ who plays songs at your event you've never heard of? Neither would we. Read on. 
Okay. Talented, experienced, very professional entertainers and MCs. Check out our current past events on our website. We do not rely solely on the cloud streaming internet for our music. Ooh. We have 10,000 hit songs in our library. <laughs> Ah, there it is, that we routinely bring with us, plus any specific songs you request ahead of time. Don't fall for the DJs where if the internet goes down, so does your music. Now something tells me that your competitor uses, you know, a streaming service, uh, you know, with Serato or something, and it really just pisses you off or you heard a bad experience about it with internet or I don't know. First of all, I think the future is we're gonna be streaming all our music, and I think the streaming services now, like shout out to like Beat Source and all that, I'm like, they're, it's legit now, so don't, don't don't you talk shit on the future, sir. The average bride nowadays streams her music on her phone. She don't put a CD in her CD player in her car, you know? Great DJ voices and personality to boot. They have great DJ voices. Oh, shit, I'd love to hear this. Years of experience, industry standard, professional PA speakers with optional subwoofer. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Uh, if, you, if you want it to sound good, you gotta pay extra. Otherwise, we're just gonna bring our two tops. With several packages available for as little as $59 an hour during weekdays for the basics. The explanation has a lot of little keywords that I can't stand that you shouldn't be talking about. But regardless, like they're claiming to be, you know, a very good company that they, you know, we, we have, we own our music. We don't stream shit. We don't risk this. We don't risk that. You know, we, we care. But at the same time, you know, your most popular price is $400. And I guess $400 will include consultation, MC, travel expenses, PA systems, microphone. So yeah, so $400. The starting price for a wedding event is $236. And that's forever, that's microphone. So what are you getting? So the only thing missing from the starting price is travel expenses. So you pretty much charge almost 50% more just for travel expenses. So like your actual service costs just as much as it takes to get there, to drive there in a car. Anybody can drive there in a car. You are way underpriced, like by a long shot. Unless you completely suck, I would raise your prices immediately, 100%. It wasn't that fun, people. I had a great ass time, but let's answer the question, right? Should DJs charge under $500 for a wedding? Like, is it ever a good idea? And after going through all those companies, I don't know about you, but I think the answer is no. I think there's really no circumstance. I mean, unless you really suck, <sighs> Excuse me. Unless you're very, very bad at your job and you have terrible reviews and you have a long way to go and someone's just looking for a budget DJ that'll come and just play music and that's it and they're not worried about, you know, any mistakes you might made. I mean, I guess you can be that cheap, but generally speaking, there's really no reason. The large majority of companies we looked at today should be charging more. Should, you know, they are good enough, legit enough, have the experience, have the setups that were, they should be charging more than double. It might take balls to charge a little more, okay? It might take balls, it might be a little scary, but when you do it, you'd be surprised. People will pay it because that's just what, what we do, the talent it takes, the experience it takes, like, don't downplay all of that, you know what I mean? If more and more DJ companies don't undercut and charge the market value, like what their services should cost, that will bring up our industry as a whole because, you know, we have one of those jobs that in most areas, it's, it's a side job, it's just a side job. It's something that people do on the weekends. Most DJs aren't full time. And that's such a shame and it's all about the price. It's all about the price you charge. You can't go full time unless you can pay your bills with the money you're making DJing. And I feel like there's probably so many DJs out there that hopefully Hopefully are watching this that like are working a job that you don't like like you know you have a nine to five that you don't like but it pays the bills it pays you good money you got benefits and all that and you know you do it for the money you do it to support your family but then on the weekends you know you put on that suit and you do what you really love for a living and you make extra money doing that but you don't go full-time because you're scared to charge like what you should be charging you're scared to make that jump I'm telling you do it just do it. After this pandemic, so many DJs, so many companies ended up not making it, unfortunately, but this is a huge opportunity for anybody who wants to, you know, make this a full-time career, to actually go all in. And it's all about pricing your services right and providing unbelievable service, like incredible service across the board. And when you're full-time and you can put 100% of your time and energy into each and every event, you're gonna be able to provide a way better service than you are right now as a part-time DJ. So listen to me, if you crush your weddings, if you're a talented DJ, if you have a nice little side business going, and the only reason why you haven't gone full-time and do what you truly love for a living 
it's because of price, it's because of what you're charging for weddings, it's just not enough to pay your bills, raise your prices and see what happens. Like bring your prices up to the market value, start like start charging more. And I promise you, if you run a legit DJ company, you know, if you're a talented wedding DJ and you're good at what you do, you will be surprised at what people will pay for that. And at that point, if you're getting the right price, take the jump go full time. It was the best decision I ever made in my life and it'll be the best decision you ever made in yours. Trust me. But that's it people. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you don't already. I post a ton of videos all the time and I'll see you guys in the next one.